know if you just saw that, but a yellow jacket just went inside. So they're getting robbed out. Now they're 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 in uh, they're still healthy, but they were weak and they started to get to ro get robbed out. And you can see some dead carcasses down there. I don't see any new ones in the last couple weeks since I've been here. But uh, but the other day when I was here, I shut their entrance down to just from here to here. You can see it. It's just a couple inches. I got video from this of this hive when I closed them down. Uh, the, when I closed the door down to them being robbed out and, and getting a robber chased out, I'll throw that video in here as well and show you uh, kind of uh, some robber behavior because one of the first things you want to do when you work a hive is, is walk into the yard and just look at every hive and see if you see something amiss. And if you don't know what you're looking for, it's hard to find that out. So, but if you know what a robber behavior is like, you'll be able to spot those robbers and tell that a hive is being robbed out versus versus you know just a hive with that looks like there's a lot of activity in front of it so I'll try to show you that I've probably got some archive videos of that and uh, we'll go from there okay let's contrast this with robbing behavior this is a normal hive everything's good I'm gonna zoom in here in a second but you just see bees coming and going everything's very calm you know, there's nectar-laden bees landing on the landing board or on that ramp and crawling up and going in the hive. There's guards down there. There's fanners. There's actually some washboard movement there. You know, there's just normal activity. Pollen carriers coming and going. If you look around the hive, there's no bees trying to get in and out of the hive bodies or the lid or anything like that. It's just normal activity. This is what you should see with your hives. This is a very healthy hive. They're just doing what they do. Okay, this is that hive that I'm screening a few days before. And you can see robbers shifting back and forth, moving from left to right, from right to left. They're sniffing the entrance, and then there's one here that's going to land and then go in, and then bam, she gets caught. One of the guards grab a hold of her back legs, and they just go at it at the front entrance. So if you, if you see that happening, that hive is being attacked and there could be a reason. Let me show you another view. This time I'm going to slow it down a little bit and you can see her moving back and forth a little bit slower. Now she goes in and she gets caught. Defensive bees that are defending their hive guards will pull on legs, hairs, uh, wings, they'll bite, they will sting, they'll do a lot of things. The one thing you know that if this is happening is that yes the hive is guarding but they are under attack and there could be a reason. Maybe the other bees know that there isn't a queen in the hive or that the queen's in trouble. Okay, this is the back of that same hive and you can see that there's bees trying to get in. Those are all robbers. They're, they were trying to get in and a couple days ago I closed them off. But what they're doing is they're sniffing and they can smell honey in there. They think they're trying to get in and you'll see that a lot. There's something else I want to show you. So I'm going to slow this video down just for a second here. Okay, I've slowed this down a lot. Uh, it's about 30% of its normal speed. I want to call your attention to a couple things. Look at the flight characteristics of the bees flying first. They fly back and forth, up and down. They investigate. Of course, there are the two bees that are sitting there trying to get in. And uh, despite the fact that there's no way for them to get in, you will see that a lot with, with hives that are being attacked. The other thing I want you to notice is that the bees, they are flying erratically. And remember, this is... 30% of the speed. You'll notice with the bees that are flying around that you can, there's almost no line on their back, on their tail. That's because guard bees pull every hair off of those bees when they're being robbed. So these are experienced robbers and they're, and, and you can tell that because basically the, the rear end of their abdomen is, is bald. And you know, with, these are Italians obviously, with carniolans you will see like a totally black bee that's shiny. These bees are shiny on their rear end. You can see them landing and investigating. That's another sign that that bee is a robber. I'm going to show you this video again. A couple things I want to note is that, one, not all robbers are bald like that. They could be young robbers. And, and bees with their tails, you know, without the hair, they could be an old worker bee, an old forager that also has that. But this type of behavior altogether tells me that those are robbers. 
Okay, this too I'm going to show you. Now this is an extreme amount, an extreme example of robbing. You can see all those are robbers that are trying to get in that hive. There's a little vent under that hive and they think they can get in but they can't. So I'm going to slow this down again and uh, explain a little bit more to you about this behavior. Okay, again this is slowed down just to show you how erratic the bees are in flight. And I want to note that the, the reason this happened is because I put some about six frames of honey in those two hives that are right in the center of the screen right now. And the bees caught whiff of that honey and they started robbing. Now, I went back the next week and everything was fine. But this is what happens when there's a nectar dearth and you've pulled off honey supers. And then what you do is you take you and extract your supers. And I've seen beekeepers that that feed common so they they take their wax cappings or sugar syrup or whatever and they put it out in the field and they go and they suck that up what happens is those bees now have become robber uh they have a robber perception they're going to go rob from other hives so if you have weak hives in the yard and you've started this this is what your hives are going to look like when you're not looking after the wax cappings are done or after you know the syrup is gone you're going to see this bees being extremely robbed out so that it, you you really need to get out of the habit of of putting out common feeders okay and then another thing that i want to point out is that robbing this kind of robbing but any robbing in particular is where disease transmission takes place so all of your big diseases afb efb varroa mite especially varroa mite um uh any of the spores, all those can be transmitted but when bees start robbing from other bees, what you've created, and you, you know, you can have a common uh, syrup side or whatever, well, it's not only your bees that are using that syrup or those wax cappings, it's your neighbor's bees, and they could have AFB or EFB, and now they're coming in contact both with the syrup container or the wax cappings, and when they, when they get into that robbing mode, now they're trying to rob your hives, or your hives are robbing their hives, and you're that's where you get disease transmission between hives. So uh, I would encourage everyone to, one, you, you don't ever want to stop robbing. So prevention is don't put wax out, don't put honey out, don't put syrup out. And, of course, another thing is that you don't want to use feeders that encourage robbing. Boardman feeders, any type of feeder where syrup is kind of open and the bees have to go into it. So there's the frame type that go in as, an ex, as, a, as a frame that the bees crawl into. There's the top feeders that the bees have to crawl up into. And then there's the Boardman feeders that come in the entrance. Those all encourage robbing because other bees can smell the syrup inside. Using a can with a few tiny holes upside down on top of an inner cover is the only real safe way to stop robbing. You can feed with syrup on top of an inner cover uh, upside down like I've showed you in the past and that will not that will not encourage robbing other bees can't smell that also bees can cluster underneath it and you can feed them all winter long like that it takes a long time for the syrup container to freeze because bees right underneath it are warming it with their own body warmth so use only feeders that don't encourage robbing and that's the only one I really know of that and maybe a patty on top of the inner cover If you have a hive that's being robbed, uh, the first thing you want to do is close their entrance down to an inch or two at the most. And if you have top entrances or rear entrances, rear entrances or holes bored in your hive bodies, things like that, you need to close those down too. So mine is closed in the back, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a robber screen on here. So a robber screen is just a screen that. Uh, like so that fits across the the hive body and when you put it in I'll show you a close-up in a minute but when you when you put it on it basically closes the gap so here's that hornet coming out with something I don't know what it was but I'm gonna let him out because this is what what the idea is you put this screen on there and they can no longer The bees can no longer just come in and out of the entrance. You can see this hornet. She's trying to get in the front door. 
all she sees is this screen. That's what she smells. And she's going to stay on that screen or sting me. But the best time to do this is early in the morning because all the foragers are in the hive. So when the foragers come out to forage, they have to learn that they have to come up and out. And they do learn that. But the robber bees come in and see this screen and they just kind of stay on the screen and they can't get in. So it, it is actually very effective. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where you would think that the robbers would be able to figure out they just need to go up here where all the other bees are coming from. But they don't. At least they don't for, for a couple weeks. Uh, any longer than that, and, and they will figure it out. So if, if it's a situation where the bees need help for longer than a couple weeks, I would suggest taking, taking them to a kind of a secluded yard and, uh, and feeding them and, and making sure they're taken care of. Anyway, these robber screens you can buy at any beekeeping outlet. Uh, you can make them yourself. I'll show you a close up here in a second. But it's a very simple tool, but it's very effective too. So if you have a hive that's being robbed out, you want to protect it its most. And so I would say this is the, the you know, once you close them down with just an inch, close all their other entrances, and then put this robber screen on, you've, you've pretty much protected them as much as you can. Now you can put this screen on in the middle of the day if it's really bad. What's going to happen is that the foragers that are, in, that are from this hive will also not be able to get in. But if you come back later that day, you know, after, at night or in the morning, like to this morning, you'll see the robber bees all went back to their hives. But the, the, hive, the bees that are in this hive will be clustered on the front of that screen. And so you can, you can literally close a hive for a day and they'll be all right. Just make sure it's a ventilated type of closure. The, the thing is you gotta come back and you gotta let those other bees in. Once they're in the hive, and they have to learn how to get out. They, they also learn, when they learn how to get out, they know how to get back in. So, uh, you can actually, if it's a really bad, dire situation, close the hive up completely. That way no robbers can get in, no bees can get out, but the hive is protected. Okay, here's a close-up of the robber screen attached to there, and then you can see that by design, the bees can come and go from this slot up on the top. And you can actually close that down too if you, if you really want, you can close it down with another screen down to say, you know, here or whatever, and they'll find that entrance. Uh, the only time you don't want to do this, close that screen down, that is, is uh, if you have a queen that needs to get out and mate. She may not be able to find that entrance, but, uh, you know, she might. You never know. But anyway. Okay, another thing I just wanted to say real quick is just that you can see the robber screen is designed so that you know, bees can come in and out of there. What happens is, is that robber bees home in on the hive that they're going to rob by smell. So when they go up to the smell, there's a screen in the way, so they can't get in there. And obviously, you see the hornet there, the yellow jacket, they can't get in either. So anyway, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, there's nothing like seeing behavior to know what it is. So you know, have a good day. Honey Be Honey signing off.